Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, this is the new dev note. Um, it was just translated in Korean. Came out a little while ago. Translated by Asalot from, from Reddit. So, big shout out to Asalot. Thanks so much for translating this. So, we're going to go in and we're going to take a look at the all the changes and stuff. I'm actually really, really excited for this. I haven't done this in a really long time. I haven't done a patch or note review or news review in a very, very long time. But... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look at all these changes and I'm just going to share my thoughts on how I think they will affect the game. Um, I'm really, really excited for this because it kind of works in my favor. You know, I'm selfish like that, but that's that's just the way things are. I, th I think everyone's selfish like that. If they buff a monster that only you have, you'd be like crazy happy. But, um, you know, it's kind of the feeling I have right now. So, uh... We're going to take a look at the first thing, the Golem dungeon changes. So the Golem, first of all, his resist is going to get greatly lowered. I don't think this is going to be too important on the lower floors because all all the lower floors, their, their resist is already relatively low. I think where this will really matter is Golem's B10. Um, if you've been farming B10 at all, you will know that the Golem's B10 boss has a ridiculous amount of resist. I think he has like his risk, resist capped out at like 85 or something. So. Um, trying to land debuffs on him is like near impossible and it does happen like you know a few times like you, if you just keep hitting him with the same debuffs it's eventually gonna land but you know trying to keep some debuff on him um, or trying to damage him with like saps and stuff is actually near impossible um, yeah it was I, it was really really painful I remember when I was farming b10 with my sapper comp a long long time ago like four months ago just, it wasn't it was really rough all right it was really really rough so the good news is I think there's this is good news for everyone because first of all for the newer players um, if you're going straight into golden speed 10 I think sap is a viable strategy again you can start you can actually sap the boss to death uh, what this means is the reason why sappers are good like early on um, if you if you don't have the correct gems like if you don't have all the right gems you need in order to do something is you don't need to, um, you don't need to gem your sappers with any sort of attack or crit rate or anything like that. All you have to worry about is HP and defense, and that's it. You don't have to worry about anything else. And uh, as long as you can get HP and defense high enough, they'll be able to do damage against the boss. So I think sap is going to be uh, an actual strategy or something like that for dragons for for golems B10. Um, once this change happens for newer players, like like actual new players that are trying to step into Golden Speed 10 without any sort of like unique monster like Water Persephone or anything like that. Or maybe they don't have um, a lot of aggressors to, to actually use. Um, this is going to be really, really good for them. Now, the second thing is the Golem is no longer immune to Thirst and Taunt. Now, this is actually pretty nice because I don't know about too much about Thirst because Thirst basically just makes it so his active skill happens a little bit less. But Taunt, you can actually use it to make it so... Um, you know, if you taunt him, he won't be able to use his his uh, his AOE or something like that, and then he won't be able to silence you. So it kind of adds like a an extra layer of defense for your team. Just like you know, just in case something bad happens, it adds an extra layer of protection for your team because taunt can serve as like a soft CC for for the boss if you happen to have it. It's, I don't think it's too game changing, but if you happen to have it on your team then it can still be helpful now. Now, the skills of minions will be changed in the golem fight. I don't think this is going to matter too much, um, mainly because either, if your team has like high resistance, obviously it won't matter what type of debuffs they have. It could be changed to, to skills like Predator or Hunter or something like that, um, which just makes them do more damage. Then that might be a little bit troubling, depending on your, your quality of gems. But I think for the most case, it doesn't really matter what type of skills that gets changed. Um, you would still, for the most part, be fine unless it's just something really, really annoying like like silence. Like they're spamming silence on your healer or something like that. Then that might be a little bit of a problem. Um, the other thing is the Golem's HP is going to be increased to balance out the fact that his resist is lower. I want to talk a little bit about like Golem speedrun teams, like people that are trying to make a team or actually have a team that is able to clear Golem's B10 in like um, two minutes or something like that. Those those teams, 
um, this is probably like the the resist and the HP change is gonna be a very very big uh, just like a huge huge factor in the the way they build their teams and a lot of people might need to rebuild their teams for Golden Speed 10 to try to fit in some sort of armor break. Um, I think armor break is going to be very very crucial for speedrunning Golden Speed 10 um, in the future. So I think uh, monsters, especially light monsters that have a high percent of armor break is going to be extremely valuable. As you can see in the background, I have this wild, uh, light wild thing that I'm leveling right now. I was actually, before I even knew about the change, I was already leveling her for a speed, um, Golden Speed 10 run, because I think 80% def down on a balance type light monster is going to be very, very good for um, Golden Speed 10. So, you know, that's really, really good news for me. Like, this is basically, like, I, I made some plans, and the devs, like, read my mind or some shit like that. It's just really, really insane. Um, and that's why I'm really, really excited about this, these changes. Now, moving on to the second part of the changes, I think this is a little bit more troubling, but um, for the most part, it's not going to affect players that are already like mid-game, end-game. Um, this is going to be a huge, huge thing for players that have just joined the game and started working on their teams for like Golden's B7 and stuff. I think this is going to be a good change. Um, Right now, the way that the Golem progression works, I don't think is really... I'm not... I don't think unhealthy is the word. It's just... It's just weird, alright? It's just really, really weird. Like, the way that Golem's protection pro progression works right now is really, really weird. Because, for, mo for the most part, people farm... Um, they farm B4 early on for a little bit of gold in order to, like, 5-star their monsters. And then they stack a bunch of wood monsters and goes directly into b7 now b7 is water and wood it works really really well against water and that's why the early game players um even with just random five star monsters with like you know four star runes or gems they're able to farm b7 relatively effectively now i think this change will make progression a little bit more um i guess the way it's supposed to work because you're probably supposed to move up like floor by floor instead of uh instead of skipping floors for and then using elemental advantage um and gimmicky stuff to try to progress instead of actually like you know raising the quality of your gems to progress to the next floor and then up and then and then up like that um now floor six i think what they're trying to do right here like i if i'm if I'm uh, trying to imagine myself as the developer right now, I think what they're trying to do right here is try to balance um, progression out a little bit, not make it so weird where you have to like skip floors. Like you, you do B4 for gold, then you skip to B7, then you um, skip to B9 because, and then you come back to B8, you know, and then you go to B10. Like that's the way kind of golem progression is working right now. So they're actually trying to make it a little bit more normal, um, a little bit easier for newer players to understand what the heck is going on instead of having to you know always rely on guides to to know what to do um, now th what they're trying to do probably is they're trying to make it so that newer players have like this uh, kind of a kind of like a a stepping stone like where they can where they can kind of start their golems farming they can start on floor six which uh, gives you access to four star to six star gems and they basically, I think the chances of six star getting six star gems are a lot lower. So probably most of the good gems you get there are still going to be five stars. But you can use B6 as a stepping stone to progress onto B7, B8, and B9. And B6 is going to be light attribute, meaning that you can take advantage of elemental advantage. Um, stuff like, um, well not, you don't take advantage of elemental advantage. You, you basically, you're like element neutral against the before so you can basically use any type of monster you want um, or you could rely on like rebirth monsters because most of the time dark rebirth monsters are pretty strong um, so it basically makes it so you can use whatever strong monsters you have for b6 and then um, and then you move on to b7 8 and 9 and I'm, I'm guessing b7 8 and 9 is no longer going to be um, since b6 is light B7, 8, and 9 is probably going, going to be element based. So some of them are going to be, it's probably going to be water, um, you know, fire, water, and, and wood on those three floors. And then it makes it so players can have to 
raise monsters of each element for each of those floors. And then they can use B6 as a stepping stone to get their gem quality up to progress onto B7, 8, and 9. Um, I think this is actually pretty pretty healthy. If they're if they're doing it the way I think they're going to do it, um, this is probably going to be a really good change for the, like, from the perspective of game design, I think this is going to be a pretty good change. Um, the only thing that, uh, like, the only way this would piss people off, I think, is people who are currently working on, um, like, B7 teams right now, because they're, most of their monsters are wood. And this kind of makes it so, you know, it might make it so that their B17 no longer works for B7 because B7 could very well be fire or something like that. But then B8 or B9 could be wood. So they might be able to use that exact same team for B8 and B9. But the stats of the B8 and B9 boss might not be equal to the B7 boss um, right now. So um, you might need better gens. So you might need to go back and spend some time in B6 farming some gens. And then eventually moving on to whichever um, you know B B seven B eight B nine boss that you have elemental advantage against. Um, I guess it's all right. I guess it's not bad. Like it's it's still still pretty good. Um, now it says that attributes won't be changed for B five and B ten. So B B wait, what is B five? B five is dark. B5 is dark, right? If I remember correctly, B5 is dark. So all the dark floors aren't going to change. So I think they're they're trying to make it so B8 isn't light. And they're trying to make B6 light. And then B789, are they're trying to mix up the elements. So maybe B7 will be fire, B8 will be water, and then B9 will be wood. No, B9 will be... B8 will be wood, B9 will be water, or something like that. Um... Yeah, I think I think it's pretty good. I think it's not bad. So it should be a pretty good change um, from a game design per perspective. Now the third thing is adjustments for dungeons. Um, easy and hard mode for story mode basically gets their boot uh, gold increased by 10 to 20 percent, meaning that uh, if you farm normal or hard mode, it actually has higher eff efficiency now. Maybe still not as high efficiency as extreme mode. But you can. What this means is, during events, if you're trying to like just farm monsters and you really don't have anything you want to level or anything like that, you can farm normal mode on um, on the maps that you want to capture monsters in, and it would have higher efficiency um, than it does right now. So I guess that's good news for everyone. Uh, the other thing is the Starstone Dungeon boss for lower levels will no longer be immune to thirst and taunt. So this is the same thing as the golems. Um, Thirst or taunt might serve as an extra layer of defense if you happen to have it. I don't think this is game changing in any way, but it's just it's just nice, um, just nice that your debuffs actually work on the boss. Now, uh, point four Astromon buffs rebalancing. It says the only buffs right here are Shiva and Nightmare, and more are to come. So they're going to be buffing more monsters, but uh, Shiva and Nightmare. I think their main problem is in their stats. Like their stats are actually pretty good. But uh, their skills are actually pretty shitty, so maybe if they do some changes to their skills, they can actually make these two monsters um, usable. Uh, point five is Heroes Festival changes. Now this probably is going to affect the most people, like probably what most people care about, because most people care about summoning, like they, they care about summoning Nat 5s and all that stuff. So. Uh, they're changing the Heroes Festival time to happen twice a month instead of once a month. So you have more chances to summon Nat 5s now. And uh, I guess that's good news. That's just good news for everyone. Um, introduction to Heroes Festival tickets for 10 plus 1. Purchase purchasable with real money. There will be a sale on these. So I think what this means is uh, it's just a way for the devs to make even more money. And um, I guess that's good. Like, you know, they, they need to make money to, to survive. But this is basically for people that actually have like money, real money to spend, like they're pay to play players. And during the Hero Heroes Festival, um, if they use this to, this to summon, it will be more efficient than if they used Astro Gems. Like if they bought Astro Gems and used Astro Gems to summon. So this will be like cheaper for them if they want to spend, like directly spend money um, for the Heroes Festival. So 
that's pretty good. That's actually pretty nice um, for those for the 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 whales of the game. Um, now Thor is still in Heroes Festival for one or two more times. He didn't confirm one or two, so this could possibly be your last chance for Thor. Um, I'm done with Thor, so I don't really care that much about it. I have my Evil Three Dark Thor, and that's really all I need. Um, maybe I can try to get a variant Thor. I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of I'm I kind of don't want to like I really like my Nat fours right now I really don't want to want to feed them away, um, but yeah this really depends. So I think what this means is in the future there's going to be new rebirth festivals like there's going to be new monsters for for different rebirth festivals and I don't think they really necessarily need to change the monsters super fast um, for each rebirth festival. Maybe they can have the same monsters but on a rotation for each re rebirth festival this way people can still come back and get a chance to get all the monsters they didn't um, have a chance to get before. And uh, it still makes things fresh because players have a chance to get new monsters on new rebirth festivals. Um, point six is the re-emergence of exotics from past events. So this is like Snowy's, Gatitos, and Jax. Yes, Snowy's, Gatitos, and Jax. This is good news for everyone because, um, I mean, Everyone can use a Jack, right? She's a she's a really good passive healer. Um, Gatito, Dark Gatito is really nice. You, sh you can grab some Wood Gatitos for for a hundred percent armor break against the Water Golem, or not Golem, uh, Water Titan. Yes, Titan. And uh, the Snowy, like Snowy, I can finally Evil Two my Evil Three my Dark Snowy, and maybe grab another Light Snowy and you know make them all variants or so something like that. That'll be pretty pretty cool. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much it for the patch. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually just really, really impressed with the devs. Like, I, every single time they roll out something new, I'm just, like, I just, the game becomes so much better. Like, it's, if you guys have played during the first month or, or I joined on the second month of the game, um, if you played really early on, like, they didn't have a lot of the things they had now, and they, they improved, you know, along the way. So the game is actually becoming better and better, um, as it progresses and yeah and the future is looking bright all right the future is looking bright so that's pretty much it uh, that's that's it for this patch or dev note review um, I'm really excited for it I don't know if you guys are but I'm just I'm really really hyped uh, especially with the golem changes I'm gonna I'm gonna build like a really really good team for golems b10 and yeah I'll, I'll be like farming like mad so that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.